you might not be surprised to feel sore after sport. But why is it that so many people experience pain when sitting all day in front of their computer? Sometimes these pains can become serious injuries if the cause is not treated early enough. Because these injuries are often due to lengthy exposure to poor work practices and workstation ergonomics, it is often difficult to pinpoint the exact cause of the problem. Ergonomics is about designing jobs and workplaces to suit people. At a computer workstation, having a good ergonomic setup will improve your work comfort and productivity. This presentation will outline the key ergonomic principles involved in setting up a computer-based workstation to increase your awareness of the risks involved and to help you work more safely and comfortably. The design of your workstation should be suitable for the tasks you have to do. If you perform many functions at your desk, refer to lots of reference materials or use more than one monitor, your desk should be large enough to meet your needs. Desks come in three basic designs. A corner workstation allows work to be arranged on either side of your computer terminal with enough space between your keyboard and monitor for a document holder. An L-shaped workstation allows your computer terminal to sit on the main desk in front of you with a side return for storage or reference. A straight desk can limit the amount of space available to work and suits people who perform less complex tasks or who require less equipment or reference material. Regardless of your desk design, it's important to understand at what height you should be working. How you achieve this will be determined by whether your desk is adjustable or not adjustable. If your desk height is not adjustable, you should adjust your chair height so that the keys of your keyboard are about level with the point of your bent elbows. If your feet are not comfortably flat on the floor, you will need to use a footrest. It's important not to have the keyboard too high as this places stress on your neck, shoulders and arms. If your desk height is adjustable, Adjust your chair so that your feet are resting comfortably on the floor with your thighs about parallel to the floor or angled slightly downwards. Then, adjust the desk height so that the keys of your keyboard are about level with the point of your bent elbows. It's important not to have the keyboard too high as this places stress on your neck, shoulders and arms. There should not be enough room under the desk to cross your legs and nor is it a recommended working posture. There's a wide range of chair styles available for use in an office environment. First and foremost, your chair must provide excellent low back support with your bottom right back in the seat. For a chair with an independent backrest and seat adjustment, firstly adjust the backrest height and tilt so that the curved part fits snugly into the small of your back, with your bottom fully back in the seat. The natural curve of your spine must be maintained. Adjust the seat tilt so that your thighs are parallel to the floor or sloping slightly downwards. Next, adjust the seat height relative to your work height. For a chair with dynamic synchro action, adjust the backrest height so that the curved part fits snugly into the small of your back, with your bottom fully back in the seat. Then, either adjust the angle of the synchronised recline function to suit your comfort level, or keep it in the unlocked position to promote movement while you're sitting. These chairs will have a tension adjustment that you can alter to suit you. Finally, adjust the seat height relative to your work height. Some of the most common faults seen with office chairs include having the backrest at the wrong height and angle, usually too low or too far back, having the chair adjusted too low, using a chair with a seat that is too long, preventing proper back support, using a chair with armrests that get in the way. There are alternative chairs that suit some people 
and you should seek further professional ergonomic advice if you think you need a different solution. Even if you have a correctly adjusted chair with excellent features, you should still aim to take short, regular breaks throughout the day or vary your tasks to change your posture. By keeping the equipment you are using a lot of the time close to you, you will avoid having to continuously reach for your keyboard, your mouse and your phone. In particular, if you refer to paperwork, don't repeatedly reach over it to use your keyboard. Documents placed to the side of the desk can also lead to poor neck postures. Ideally, place documents in front of you on a document holder, between the keyboard and monitor for easy reference. This will allow you to bring your keyboard and mouse closer to you without the need to reach. Your upper arms should stay close to the sides of your body when keying. Constant mouse use can cause problems particularly if the mouse is too far away and if you lean on the front of your wrist. Try to keep the mouse as close to you as possible and use it with your elbow close to your body. There are alternative styles of keyboards that allow the mouse to be positioned closer to you. Mini keyboards do away with the number keypad on the right hand side, allowing the mouse to be in a better position if you're right handed or you could use a keyboard with the number keypad on the left hand side for the same effect. Angled or splayed keyboards aim to keep your wrists in a better anatomical position. Different designs of mice are available that allow your arm to be used in a more natural position. You should seek further professional ergonomic advice if you think you need alternative equipment. And finally, try and learn as many keyboard shortcuts as you can rather than relying too much on your mouse. All the other equipment that you use frequently, such as your phone, should also be close. The less frequently you use items, the further away they can be. If you use a handset, it's often better to place the unit on your non-dominant side, to avoid the temptation to cradle the phone between your ear and your shoulder. You should always use a headset if your job involves significant hands-free phone use. Many people now use a laptop or notebook as their main computer. However, these can create their own specific risks and hazards. When using a notebook for any length of time, either elevate the screen on a riser and use a separate keyboard and mouse, or use a full-size monitor screen depending on your work. Limit the use of a notebook without modification to short durations. The distance, height and angle of your monitor should allow you to view the screen without tilting your head up or down or leaning forwards. Keep monitor heights consistent if you use more than one screen. Place your main screen directly in front of you. Or if you use both screens equally, Position each monitor at an equal distance symmetrically. A mobile monitor arm or adjustable height monitor can be easily adjusted to suit the operator. A monitor arm also allows for more flexible use of desk space. Be careful if you wear bifocals or graduated lenses, as this can sometimes lead to poor neck postures when looking at the screen. Bad lighting conditions can lead to headaches, eye fatigue and poor work postures. Watch out for workplaces that are too bright, too dull for paperwork or too glary. Sloppy cord management can be a safety and electrical hazard. It can also limit where you put your equipment, affecting your work posture. Any obstructions on the floor could present a trip hazard to yourself or others, so keep it all tidy. Finally, it's hard to stay organised and work well if your desk is cluttered and untidy. Remove anything you don't need and keep your work area orderly and well set out. How you work is just as important as how your workplace is set up. Every time you check the screen, stop keying to think, speak on the phone without entering data, even if only for a second or two, 
Completely relax your hands and arms on the keyboard or the desk. These momentary breaks occur naturally and frequently during all keyboard tasks and are in addition to the formal rest breaks you take and the frequent changes in posture that you should aim for. These short pauses will give your muscles a chance to recover before you make a fresh start. Now that we've talked about the most common issues with the ergonomics of your workstation, let's review some of the common faults in action. How many things can you see Kate doing wrong? Kate's desk appears too cluttered and disorganised for all the tasks that she is performing, which is affecting her posture. She may need an alternative desk, or she may need to remove non-essential items and rearrange her layout. To avoid reaching over documents to enter data into the keyboard, Kate should use a document holder and bring the keyboard and mouse closer to improve her work posture. Likewise, if documents are placed to the side, she should reposition them to allow neutral head and neck postures. Now, let's review Brad's workstation and see what he can improve. Brad should never hold the phone between his ear and shoulder. He should either hold the handset with one hand or use a headset. Here we see Brad sitting too low relative to his work height. He should either adjust the desk lower if the desk is adjustable or sit higher if the desk is not adjustable. Finally, Brad's sitting posture is not good. The chair backrest should be adjusted to maintain his low back curve and he should sit back in the chair to get better support. In our last case study, what problems can you identify with the way Colin is working? Colin should be able to view the screen without tilting his head and neck awkwardly. He may need to adjust his sitting position or his screen height, or he may need to see his optometrist about being prescribed glasses for screen-based work. Colin's mouse is too far away. He should bring it closer and use it with easy arm movements without reaching and leaning on his wrist. Colin should not sit with his legs crossed under the desk. There should not be enough room under the desk to cross your legs, and nor is it a recommended working posture. If you picked up nine faults across the three examples, well done! Computer-based workstations are constantly evolving, but the underlying principles of good work posture don't change. Now that we've shown you some of the common issues associated with computer-based workstations, can you identify any improvements that you can make in the way you work after having seen this presentation? Because when you're working safely, everyone wins.